Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 670. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 661 to 671. Hey, all these videos, all 11 videos, are all about the new aggregate function in 2010. Totally amazing. We've talked in nine videos about these functions, about the array functions, about the options for ignoring hidden rows, errors, nested subtotals. Uh, the last three videos we've done array formulas and in 70 and 71 we're going to do big array formulas and let's just take a look at what we're trying to do here. We're trying to extract all of the records for Galt. So in essence what we want to do in the finished version is we just want to be able to select Galt and then have all the records appear. Select uh, Sue and have all the records appear. Now I've done other videos on this and we do big array formulas. In fact, let me come over to this sheet and we ask the question, uh, this is our formula number incrementer. We say, as this goes down, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We say, anytime that's greater than the count for this particular person, Galt is 23, then we want to show a blank because at the bottom of the data set we need to show a blank even though there's a formula there. Otherwise, we're going to do index, and we look at the column we want, date, sales rep, and sales uh, each successively. And we need to extract just the records for Galt, right? So we use small, and we say if anything in that range of uh, sales rep names is equal to Galt, then please give us this construction. And if you watch videos, that I've done before, this gives us the row numbers for the data set. And as the small copies down, this formula number incrementer will take the first biggest row, the second biggest, the third biggest. That'll dump it into the index, which will extract the correct d piece of data for that record. Now, what you want to notice here is with the small and if construction, just like we've seen back in the last three videos when we've been looking at arrays, the, cr the actual criteria comes first in an array formula like this, and then the numbers come second. So what you're saying is if, give me the criteria, and then f dump the numbers in, right? We've seen this three times so far when we do a similar type formula. It's going to be the reverse when we use the aggregate. The numbers are going to come first, then we're going to divide and have the criteria and the denominator. Now the nice thing about this, it, once you get used to it, is you don't have to use Control Shift Enter. All right, we're going to use the same um, outer parts of the this formula over here as we've seen other times here it's just the small if construction that we're going to get to throw out we're going to take that part and put in its place the aggregate and we will not have to do control shift enter equals if by the way what did I do here to count this is just a single criteria so I just use count if now we need to have our um, if and then rows, I'm sitting in E5, so E dollar sign 5 colon E5. Yeah, that's our formula, our number incrementer as we go down. So anytime 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. is greater than that. So anytime our, for, our rows are greater than that, then what do we want? Comma, the value of true, a blank. Otherwise, we want our index. Index is a lookup function. Now, the array for the index needs to be just the first column, control shift down arrow, and F4 once and twice. Very important that when we copy the formula down, it's locked on this column here. But when we move over to the sales rep, that dancing ants will move over. That's why there's no dollar sign in front of the A. Everything so far is the same. Now row number. Our goal, we want row 1, row 4, row whatever that is, 7 or 8. And so instead of using small if, we're going to use aggregate. Now, aggregate allows us to, um, in essence, simulate what small does. But we don't have to use Control shift enter So I use a 15, comma. As we've seen in the last three videos, our Oh, I can't get this to slide over. Okay, I'll do it this. Oh, there we go. Our um, 
when we get to this part right here, it says array op. We're in options. When we get to array, our array is going to do division, and the criteria is going to be in the denominator. So we're going to get uh, falses, which will be 0. So it'll be divided by 0. So we'll get divided by 0 errors. So we are absolutely going to have to select this. Totally awesome. It just says, hey, ignore. Option 6 says ignore the errors, comma. Now remember, our numbers come first. What are our numbers? We're trying to dump something into index, right? So our numbers are row numbers. So we do, in parentheses, our little calculation we always do. The row, and it doesn't matter which column you pick. I'm just going to pick the first one, F4. That right now will give us 2, 3, 4. That's not what we want. We want 1, 2, 3. So we minus row. And we subtract that one, and we'd be sure and hit F4. So right now we're getting. 2 minus 2, which is 0, so then we have to add 1. Now, there's other ways to do this, but this is robust. No matter where you, how many rows you insert up here, or columns, or where you move it, this will always give you exactly the number of rows in the data set. All right, so that is in parentheses. And we can highlight this and just see that it gives us F9, gives us our row numbers. Now, we don't want all of them. We, on, we only want the ones that are for Galt, so it would be like 1 and 4. Control Z. Divide by, and now this is where we put our criteria. So I'm going to say highlight this column, Control Shift Down O, F4 equals Galt and F4. Now we get close parentheses, our trues and falses, F9. Falses are 0, so when I highlight this whole range right here now, the row numbers, F9, I get some row numbers which are exactly what I want. For example, Galt is in 53, but I need to avoid the divide by. Control Z. That 6 will do it comma, and now the k. Now this is our formula incrementer. As we go down, we need to successively pull out the row numbers, one, the first one, the second one, the first smallest, second smallest, etc. So we use our row incrementer, one, two, three. Close parenthesis on the aggregate. That is our row number, close parentheses. The value of this false is the index, close parentheses. And watch this. We've done so many formulas like, the, like this at here at Excel is Fun. We are going to hit Enter. And that thing calculates. Look at that. No curly brackets. Now I'm going to copy it over and immediately point to my fill handle because the formatting is wrong. Fill without formatting. And then I'm going to copy it down. And let's test it and see. OK, let's test it. Uh, Smith. Oh, we got all the Smith. Frank. Sue. Now, this, um, here at Excel is Fun, we have done extract formulas like this with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 criteria. We've done AND criteria. We've done OR criteria. Whatever it is you construct, it all has to go uh, in the denominator. All right, the last video will be seven, uh, 671, and we'll do an extract formula like this with two criteria. All right, we'll see you for our last aggregate video, Magitrix 671. See you next video.